In this lecture, you are going to learn about a very important concept in React called props. We use props for passing data from one component to another component. To be more precise, we use props for passing data from parent component to child component. Currently, in this React application, we are displaying only one product. But let's say we have a list of products and we want to display all those products in this application. For example, here we have this products component. So basically, we have this products function, which is a component and we are using this component inside this app component. Now here, we are using this products component only once. That's why we are seeing this product only once. But if I go ahead and if I reuse this product three more times, and now if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, you will notice that that product has been repeated four times. So in this way, we can reuse a component. Now here, the problem is we are displaying the same product four times. But instead of displaying the same product, we want to display different products. And to display each product, we want to use the same products component. So let's first go ahead and let's create a list of products. For that, I am going to create an array, which I will call products. And inside this array, we will have a list of products. And each product here is going to be an object. So to create an object, we use curly braces. And inside that, let's say we have a property called PID, so product ID. For the first product, let's say the ID is 1. In the same way, let's say we have another property called P name. And here, for the first product, let's say product name is fresh milk. Then, let's say we also have product description. So for now, for the description, let's use lorem ipsum text. Then, let's say we also have one more property called is available and this is available will tell whether the product is available or not so to this we are going to assign a boolean value true or false if is available is true that means the product is available otherwise the product is not available and finally we also want to have an image property which will store the url of the image so here we are going to keep our image in the images folder and inside that we will have an image with the product name. Okay, so here we have created one product, but in this way, we want to have many products. And in order to save some time, here I have already created some products. I will share this text file in the description so you can use this product list. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy the rest of the products from here and I will paste it inside this products array. Okay. So here in this product array, we have five products. Now what we want is we want to pass each of these products to this products component and we want to display the details of that product. Now how can we do that? For that, we can use the concept of props. Now if you notice, we are using this products component like an HTML element. And we know that HTML elements can also have attributes. So this products element here is our custom HTML element. And this custom HTML element can have custom HTML attributes. That means we can define an attribute of our choice for these custom elements. So for example, let's say for this products element, I want to have an ID attribute. And to this ID attribute, I want to assign the ID of the first product. That means I want to assign the value of this PID to this ID attribute. Now, since we want to assign the value of this PID property of this object to this ID attribute, we need to use curly braces here because we have learned that if we want to use some JavaScript expression, we can use it by using curly braces like this. Now, I want to access this first object of this product array. For that, I can use the index of this object, which will be zero because it is the first element of this product array. So, I will copy this array name and here I can say 
products of 0. And this products of 0 is going to return this first products object. And this object has this PID property. So I can access this PID property using dot notation like this. Okay. And it will return the value of this PID property. So this D should be caps here. All right. In the same way, let's say I also want to have a name attribute for this products element. And to this, I want to assign the value of the name property of products object. So again, I can access this first products object using this expression products of zero because for the first object, the index is going to be zero. And on that, I can access this P name property. So here we are assigning the value stored in this P name property of this first object. That means this value to this name attribute. Now let me move it to a separate line so that it will be more readable. Now in the same way, I also want to have a description attribute. And to this description attribute, I want to assign the value stored in the description property of the first object. So again, I will copy this expression. I will paste it here and here I will access the description property. So the value stored in this property, I'm assigning it to this description attribute. In the same way, I also want to have is available attribute. And to this, I want to assign the value stored in the is available property of this first object. And finally, I also want to have the image URL property. And to this, I want to assign the value stored in this image property of this first object. Okay, so here I can say products of zero and it is going to return the first object and it has this image property. And if you notice for other objects, we also have this price property. So let's also add the price property for this first object. Okay, and let's set the price to maybe $14. And here, Let's create another attribute. Let's call it price. And to this, we want to assign the value stored in the price property of first object. So let me copy this. Let's paste it here. And here we want to access the price property. Now you might ask, why are we setting these attributes for this products component? Well, remember that this products component is nothing but a function. And by default, each component function is going to receive a parameter. Okay, so React will make sure that we get one parameter in every component function. And that one parameter will be an object which holds all the received attributes as its properties. So for example, let's say here we specify the parameter name as data. So this data is going to be an object and this object will have these attributes as its properties and the value which we are assigning to these attributes those will be the value for those properties okay so here this data object is going to have an id property a name property a description property is available property image url property and price property okay so whatever name you specify here for these attributes with the same name a property will be created in this parameter, the parameter which the component function is going to receive. And this parameter is called as props. Okay, and that's why by convention, we also name this parameter as props. You can call it data, you can call it anything, but by convention, we call it props. So here, when we are using this products component and when we are setting these attributes, these attributes will be passed to this props parameter. That means these attributes will be created as a property for this props parameter. And now we can go ahead and use those properties of this props parameter in this JSX expression. So for example, here, instead of 
writing this hard coded name for the product. Now I can go ahead and use curly braces here. And inside this, I can use the name property of this props object. So here you can see we have specified a name attribute. So with this name, a property will be created inside this props object. In the same way, here we want to display the description. So again, I will use a set of curly braces here and I will use this props object and it is going to have a description property because with this name here, we have created an attribute on this products component. So with this name, a property will be created on this props object. In the same way, here we want to use the price property of this props object. So here we can say props dot price. And finally, here we want to use this image URL attribute. So basically this image URL attribute will be created as a property of this props object. Okay, so here I want to use that property. So here I can say props dot image URL. Now, if you remember in the previous lecture, we learned that when we want to load image from our local server, in that case, we need to use this require method. Now, this require method will only work when we pass a string to this method. But here, if you notice, if I hover over it, you will see that the data type of this image URL is any, it is not string. Now, one way to solve this issue is by converting this expression into a string. So for that, what we can do is we can use an empty string here and then we can use this plus operator. So what it will do is it will convert this value also to a string. But for some reason, this approach is also not working in my case. Okay, so converting this image URL to a string by using this empty string is not working in my case. But in your case, it might work. So another solution which we can use is basically I have all my images inside this images folder. And since I'm using this images folder inside this source folder, that's why I need to use this require method. But if I move this images folder inside this public folder, in that case, I don't need to use this require method. So for example, if I cut it from here and if I put it inside this public folder, now I don't need to use this require method also and I don't need to convert it to string. Okay, I can simply remove this require method and it should work as expected. So keep in mind that whenever you want to use images in your React application, try to put it in the public folder so that it will be easily accessible and it will be loaded properly. Otherwise, if you put it in the source folder, then in that case, you will have to use require method and require method might not work as expected. Now let's go back to our app.js and let's do the same thing. So let's set these attributes for other products component as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this component and I will paste it four more times. Okay. And now here yeah, I will simply go ahead and change the index number. So for the second product, the index number is going to be one. In the same way, for the third product, the index number is going to be two. Then for the fourth product, the index number is going to be three. And for the fifth product, the index number is going to be four. Okay, so remember that whenever we are using this products component like this, it is going to call this products function. Okay. And to this products function here, we are passing some argument. So these attributes are nothing, but it's arguments. These arguments will be created as a property of this props object. Okay. So instead of having these six parameters, okay, it is having only one parameter which is an object and in that object these attributes are set as its property. So here we are calling this products function for the first time and we are passing these arguments. Then 
when we are using it for second time we are again calling this products function and we are passing these values as its argument in the same way when we are using it for the third time this products function will be called for the third time and for the third time it will receive these values as its argument all right so try to understand this in this way all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here you will notice that all those five products are being displayed okay so from the app component we are passing some data to this products component now this products component is the child component of this app component so here we are passing data from the parent component to the child component the parent component is the app component here and the child component is this products component and how are we passing data from one component to another component using the concept of props now if i go to the web page here we have one bug so if i go back to app component you will notice for this fifth product the is available property is set to false in the same way for this second product this is available property is set to false but here for all the products it is showing as available so let's go back to our product.js and it is showing available because here we are using is available variable so this variable which we have created here and let's also remove this image url from here because now we are no more using it instead of that we are using the image url property of this props object right so i will comment it here in the same way here instead of is available variable i want to use the is available property of props object okay now if i save the changes and if i go to the web page here we have some error that's because this is available is a boolean value so if it is true we want to return available otherwise we want to return unavailable okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now you can see available unavailable available available and last product is unavailable now when the product is unavailable we want to show it in red badge for that let's go ahead and let's copy this variable from here and let's create a local variable for this products component okay and here instead of this is available variable we want to use props dot is available so if props dot is available if it is true in that case we want to return this bootstrap class otherwise if it is false we want to return this bootstrap class with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now you will notice that for the unavailable products the badge is in red and for the available products the badge is green all right let's also comment this variable because now we are no more using it this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day